Assalamu alaikum. Welcome all to Easy Human Anatomy channel. In this video, I discuss development of lacrimal apparatus. Imagine a tiny embryo gradually forming facial features. And within that process, a small yet essential system begin to develop the lacrimal apparatus. But before we drive into how this tear producing system takes shape, let's understand the foundation upon which it is built, the development of the face. Face begin to form around the third week of gestation with the development of pharyngeal arches and facial prominence. This structure gives rise to the basic features of face creating the framework for the lacrimal apparatus. Within third week, formation of pharyngeal arches form in the embryo and setting the groundwork for the facial development. This is the pharyngeal arches. Within Four to five week facial prominence are developed, the frontonasal prominence, maxillary prominence, and mandibular prominence. Frontonasal prominence again divided into two parts: medial nasal prominence and lateral nasal prominence around the nasal pit. So there is a two medial nasal prominence and two lateral nasal prominence. Soon, the two medial nasal prominence is close with each other and there is a gap between lateral nasal prominence and maxillary prominence and this gap is known as the lacrimal group. Before discussing the development of lacrimal apparatus, let's first understand its different component. The lacrimal apparatus is responsible for tear production, distribution and drainage. It includes lacrimal gland located in the upper outer orbit producing tear to lubricate and protect the eye. Lacrimal duct transport tear from the gland to the conjunctival sac. This is conjunctival sac. Then the lacrimal puncta. This is lacrimal puncta, a tiny opening in the medial corner of the upper lower eyelid. Lacrimal canaliculi channel that drain the tear from the puncta to the lacrimal sac. Lacrimal sac reservoir for tear located in the medial orbital wall. Nasolacrimal duct drain tear from the lacrimal sac into the inferior meatus of the nasal cavity. Now the development of the nasolacrimal duct. Initially, the maxillary prominence and lateral nasal prominence are separated by a deep furrow the nasolacrimal group. The ectoderm in the floor of this group form a solid epithelial cord that detach from the overlying ectoderm. The epithelial cord canalize to form the nasolacrimal duct. After detachment of the cord, the maxillary prominence and lateral nasal prominence march with each other. The lacrimal drug from the medial corner of the eye to the inferior meters of the nasal cavity. The lateral nasal prominence help form part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity including bony and cartilaginous component. The maxillary prominence also contribute to formation of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and also produce the heart palate. 
the mesenchymal tissue in the lateral nasal wall differentiated and ossify and form the inferior concha and below the inferior concha there is a depressed area where it receives the opening of the lateral duct The development of the nasolacrimal duct and its opening into the inferior meatus is a result of embryological fusion of lateral nasal and maxillary prominence. Lacrimal sac and nasolacrimal duct arise from the same epithelial tissue that contribute to the formation of the lateral nasal cavity. So it drains into the inferior meatus. Development of the lacrimal sac. The upper end of the nasolacrimal duct widened to form lacrimal sac. Development of the lacrimal canaliculi. From the lacrimal sac, two canaliculi process form and canalize. As development progress, the canaliculi mature and form connection with the lacrimal punta, a small opening on the eyelids. So the proximal end of the canaliculi open into the uh, conjunctival sac and it connect the conjunctival sac to the lacrimal sac. Development of the conjunctival sac. This is optic vesicle, optic cup and it's actually developed retina. After the formation of the optic vesicle, lens placot form lens vesicle, which is arise from the surface ectoderm, and lens vesicle detach from the surface ectoderm. So this is the surface ectoderm. This is lens vesicle. This is future retina, and this is the developing eye. Now concentrate on surface ectoderm. At the sixth week of development, the formation of the small groups or depression in the surface of the ectoderm above and below the developing eye. Above and below the developing eye, this group depends to form the eye fold. The surface ectoderm that line the inner surface of the eyelid, inner surface of the eyelid, and also cover the eyelid. From the conjunctival sac. So this is the conjunctival sac. The eyelid fuse by the ninth week of intrauterine life. This fusion is essential for protecting the developing eye and allow for the formation of conjunctival sac between eyelid and cornea. And from this corneal sac, lacrimal gland also start to develop at the sixth week of development. The reopening of the eyelid is occur around seventh month, allowing uh, intrauterine life, allowing the conjunctival sac to become functional. This reopening is crucial for normal visual development and tear film stability. Development of the lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland develops from surface ectoderm. The this is conjunctival sac conjunctiva. The development of the lacrimal gland begins with a epithelial thickening in the superior conjunctival fornix at six week of development. By the eight week of the development, the epithelial bud begins emerge from the thickened epithelium from the ductal system of lacrimal gland and within 9 to 16th week of development this uh, lacrimal bud from SNI and ductal system. Lacrimal gland start functioning around 6 week after birth which explain why baby may cry without tear during the first few week of life. The lacrimal gland typically reaches full secretory capacity around 6 and 8 years of age. 
the lacrimal gland is divided into two parts the orbital part and palpable part this division occurred between 9th and 11th week of gestation the lateral horn of the aponeurosis of the labrador palpebris superioris muscle play a critical role in this division the orbital and palpable loop is interconnected through ductal system that facilitates tear production and drainage so this is all about development of the lacrimal gland if you find this video helpful please share this video please support my channel uh, by subscribing and if you like this video please press like button and uh, thank you for watching